Creating effective and compelling data visualizations is a key part of the data science workflow. Many of us turn to Python to create visualizations using Matplotlib, Seaborn, Plotly, etc. But all of this requires some level of coding. And there are a number of libraries available out there that help with the exploratory data analysis workflow. So some of these libraries I've already covered in my Medium articles, such as SweetViz, Detail, and many others as well. And these make it very easy to get a statistical analysis, as well as visualizations of our data with very limited lines of code. And one library that's just been released is PyGWalker, or as the authors like to rename it, is PigWalker. PigWalker is a Python library that can help speed up the data analysis and visualization workflow directly within a Jupyter Notebook. And it provides an interface similar to the very popular data analytics platform called Tableau, where we can drag and drop features from our data set into the workspace and create interactive visualizations, all with minimal effort. So in today's video, we're going to see how we can use PigWalker on a well-logged data set. We're not going to do an in-depth tutorial. This is more just an overview of what it can do and some of the basic functionality. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can use the library. To get started with PigWalker, we need to install it first. We could do this through the terminal, but we can do it directly from Jupyter Notebook using an exclamation mark, followed by pip install, and then the library name. In this case, it's pygwalker or pigwalker. And when we run that, we'll go through the steps of installing that library, and then it will tell us that it's done. So in this case, I've already installed it, so it's just telling me that that requirement is already satisfied. So we can then move on to the next step. But if we end up with significant text here, which we may do when we're installing the library, we can click on this blue bar on the left hand side, just to shrink that output down so we don't see it. And we don't have to run this every time we come back to the notebook, we just need to run it once. Next, we need to import our libraries that we're going to use, which is pandas. And that is going to be imported as PD, which is an abbreviation for pandas. This just makes it easier when we're referencing that library in the code. Rather than typing out pandas, we can just type PD. Similarly, with pigwalker, we import that as PYG. So we can run that to import the libraries. And then we're going to load the data into a data frame object. And we do that using pandas read underscore CSV. And for this example, I'm using data from the Zeek Force 2020 lithology machine learning competition and we're just using one well within that data set. To then get pigwalker working we call upon pyg.walk and then pass in our data frame. So we can run that and within a few seconds we get this interface here where we've got a nice dark looking interface which is very nice I prefer dark mode anyway. So on the top left here we have two tabs data and visualization. So the data tab will present all of our data that is contained within that data frame we have our index for the data frame, as well as the categorical variables such as the well name, group, formation, and lithologies further along. And then we have our numeric variables such as caliper, deep resistivity, rho b, gamma ray, etc. And we can change these if they've been incorrectly selected. We just click on the drop down for each of these and we can switch it to a dimension or a measure. So dimension is where we've got a categorical variable and a measure is where we've actually got a measurement, a, a continuous variable. So there's not much functionality within here. Uh, we can scroll through and just look at the values and that's pretty much it. Uh, but it just provides a nicer looking interface to looking at data frames compared to pandas options. The main part of the library is the visualization tab and this is where we can visualize our data. Now, if you're familiar with Tableau, which is a data analysis package and much more, we usually have our, our variables on the left and then we can drag and drop them into uh, the specific spaces such as the x-axis, the y-axis, filters, and we can even color it, change the opacity, size, shape, etc. And it's all done through drag and drop. So if I take, for example, row B and plot that on the y-axis, we then just get a single bar back. And this is just a summation of all the values within that uh, particular curve. And then we can put nphi on the x-axis. What we get back is a scatter plot, but we'll see that we've only got a single point on here. And this is because it's summing up all the values. By default, PigWalker has, has the aggregation set on. So we can click this little cube icon in the menu. After a few seconds, it comes back with this scatter plot where we can then see the individual values being plotted. Now this chart is a little small, but we can change that by just clicking on this uh, layout mode and changing it to fixed. 
and then we can see that the shape has changed but we can also now easily select the edges of the chart with this uh, double headed arrow and we move that over to the right and then we do the same with the bottom and then we have a much bigger chart to look at and we can hover over each of the points we can see the individual values for these points n5 row b uh, we can see that changes as we move through the data now if we want to zoom in and move around the plot uh, we need to come to this little icon here for axis resizing so it's a double headed arrow and we click on that and it will turn a sort of a very dark shade of blue it's hard to see in the dark mode but uh, when you do that you can then click on the plot and left click with the mouse button and then we can move around the plot and then we can also zoom in with the mouse wheel at present it doesn't look like we can edit the axes to change the values something which is very popular within Plotly where you can just double click on certain parts of the axis and then change the values within that maybe that is something that will come in a future version but for this version uh, we, we can't really control that other than being able to move around and zoom in so we've got different ways that we can use the other variables so if we take for example the formation variable here and drag that into the color column or row here we'll soon see that the plot will update with colors representing the different formations. We can see we've got the, the frig formation in orange here, which you can see is hiding sort of behind all these points here. And then we've got other uh, formations over here on the left. However, we can see that this is quite a lot of data. If we want to remove some of it, we can do just by dragging and dropping that uh, variable within the filters category here and then it will automatically pop up with editing the rule and that will list all of the f available formations so if we are only interested in say the boulder and the selly formation we can unselect them now this may seem counterintuitive at first but then we just click on the reverse selection button here and that will just reverse our selection alternatively we could have unselected all of the different categories and then selected the ones that we want so just a couple of different ways that we can work with this which is nice so if we click on this little tick icon here, we'll go back to our plot and then we'll see that we're left with the two formations, Boulder and the Selly formation. So this is very nice. We can then view that, that plot. And if we, wanted, if we wanted to, we can color things by different variables, such as by the, the gamma ray instead of the formation. If I delete the, the formation here and then drop on the GR curve into the color column, we then see that we've got a range, a sequential range here from about z 0 up to about 120 and that gives us our different colours for the variables. Again it doesn't seem like we can change the, the colour map that's used, by default it just comes with this white to blue colour map. If we want we can also filter by values, so if I take the, the GR curve and drop it into the filters section, we then have a slider here and this is just taking the values for the entire curve or measurement we can see we're going from about 6 up to 804 so at the moment it doesn't seem like we can control these manually uh, in terms of being able to type the values in but we can adjust these sliders so if I adjust that slider all the way down to say around about 80 uh, API and then click on the little tick we can then see that their color scale has changed and points have also disappeared so let's just remove these just reset the chart basically so that we've got N5 and row B. Now the nice thing about this is we can have multiple subplots without having to specify or well, want two rows by three rows uh, like what we would do in matplotlib. We can in fact just come in here and click and drag GR and drop that on the x-axis and then we'll see another subplot appearing on the right and which is our gamma ray. And we can do the same with PEF. We can click that and then just drag it on to the y-axis and then we'll see a 2x2 two two grid. So we'll have our N5 versus row B up here, and then gamma ray versus row B here, and the two subplots at the bottom here are PEF versus N5 and gamma ray on, on the, this one on the right. If we want to create a new visualization, we can click on the new button up here in the top, and then we get a new chart. So for example, maybe we want to view a line plot instead of a scatter plot. So we could take our depth measurement and put that onto the x-axis and then we could put on say the row B curve into the y-axis and again by default it sets aggregation on which we can easily just uh, uncheck by clicking this button up here and then we have our scatter plot 
versus uh, of row B versus depth, which is not quite what we want. We want a line plot. So let, let's first resize this so that we've got uh, a bigger plot to look at. So once that's updated, we can change the scatter plot to a line plot by clicking on this little orange button up here. By default, Pigwalker sets it to auto. However, there are various other options in here, such as bar charts, line charts, area charts, uh, trails, scatter circles, uh, rectangles, arcs, so your pie chart, and then a box plot at the end. Uh, so for this one, we're just going to select the line plot, click on that, and now we have our line plot of our row B versus depth. And that's the very basics of using Pigwalker to analyze a well logged data set. There's so much more functionality, and it's definitely worth exploring. If you've enjoyed today's content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.